Uh, we're sitting here at a beautiful suite overlooking the Eiffel Tower in Paris. So Medici TV gave me this box of weird objects. So that kind of fits. It's a baguette. This is a great symbol for something that I love. Uh, one of the gifts, everyday gifts of traveling is discovering always the local food, the traditional places. Food is a very big part. It's not just French food. I'm also crazy about Japanese food. I love to cook. So whenever I'm at home, which is not very often, uh, I love to spend uh, most of the day <laughs> in the kitchen. But of course, I can't just be uh, only eating. This is just a hobby, of course, for me. We have a recording here. Orchestra works by Maurice Ravel. Uh, of course, uh, France has such a great tradition. I personally love uh, very much, my, my favorite opera is Carmen, so Georges Bizet. Uh, also, I love uh, very much uh, Berlioz uh, and his Symphony Fantastique. It's uh, something that we all grow up with, with the great, uh, with the great French composers, uh, but if you put a gun to me and say, pick one composer, <laughs> I will mention still two, and that's Bach and Mozart for me. But then when I say this, I already feel horrible because how can I ignore somebody like Beethoven <laughs> and Schubert? and Tchaikovsky, and Brahms, etc., etc. So uh, we're in a very lucky position that we can listen to all of these amazing, uh, amazing geniuses. And uh, we can, uh, you know, a life is not enough to discover the miracles and the wonders of the great composers. That's amazing. It's also one of my favorite recordings. It's um, the concert of the century at Carnegie Hall. So it's uh, f uh, that was done for the 85th birthday of uh, Carnegie Hall, the 85th anniversary of Carnegie Hall in 1976, when I was uh, one and a half years old. <laughs> and it has, which I love, the Tchaikovsky, the first movement of the Tchaikovsky piano trio with um, Horowitz, Isaac Stern, and Rostropovich playing. Yes, we should uh, never forget these great masters, uh, Leonard Bernstein, uh, also one of my greatest heroes of all times, because, you know, I have a little story about Bernstein. I would be coming as a little boy to every of his concerts, and I would always come backstage and always uh, ask him, uh, Maestro, I play the violin, can I play for you? And, you know, he would hug me and uh, say, next time, next time. And uh, like this for many years, after every concert, he would always do the same. And um, then in 1988, when I um, was lucky to win the Eurovision uh, competition at the Concertgebouw in 88, um, after the competition, again I came uh, to him for the 40th time <laughs> to say, Maestro, can I play for you? And um, he said, next time, next time, as always. But there was somebody from the BBC television uh, station was standing next to him and he said, no, I said, you have to listen to this boy. He just won this first prize at this competition. And so I had a chance to play for Bernstein. And uh, he, um, yeah, he listened to the whole Mendelssohn concerto. It was uh, during the recording of, um, he was recording with the Vienna Philharmonic, the Beethoven piano concertos with Christian Zimmermann. And in the break of the recording, he listened to me and uh, the break was already over and the orchestra was waiting on stage for Deutsche Grammophon to continue the recording. 
and uh, you know, so the the stage person would open the artist, the conductor's room, uh, and say that the break is over, and Van would say, "Go out, I'm listening." And he was uh, so he made the Vienna Philharmonic wait for half an hour <laughs> to listen to this little schmuck, <laughs> little Julik, little Julian, and. Uh, then I received an invitation to play with him uh, with the Boston Symphony. But uh, unfortunately, uh, a few months later, he passed away. So it never happened. And my debut with the Vienna Philharmonic was, uh, I think, two days after his death. And uh, so my debut at the Musik Friend with the Vienna Philharmonic, I think it was Ricardo Muti conducting, was the official memorial concert to Leonard Bernstein, who I had just played for. So that's my little story. I, was, I never had the luck to play with him, but when I look at this uh, LP and this uh, you know, recording, it reminds me of my small little story with Leonard Bernstein. This is probably not surprising, Julian Rachlin holding a pig and pushing the nose up. This is something that I've been doing all my life. I have a collection of probably ab around a thousand piggies by now. I always say I'm the biggest one. They have these very cute little noses and um, they're soft. <laughs> they symbolize the nose for me. And pigs uh, apparently bring luck. Uh, at least in Vienna for New Year, be, uh, everybody gives each other pigs. And of course, people who, who watch Medi uh, Medici TV, uh, they can now uh, access the movie Noseland, which my oldest friend, uh, Alexei Gudesman, directed. They have to go through the nose test. Excuse me. Yeah. May I squeeze your nose? <laughs> It's not all about noses, it's called Noseland, but it's a documentary of the festival that I was run, running in Dubrovnik. It was the 10th anniversary. And it's uh, not actually a documentary, it's a mockumentary. It's a very funny uh, movie, uh, but uh, it's got a lot of uh, music, uh, a lot of wonderful chamber music um, in that movie. And um, yeah, it's Alexei's uh, very first movie. and. I just love noses, and uh, if you watch uh, the movie Noseland, you will know why I like noses.